there is a subtopic in, in, the, in this Helmholtz section called perfectly matched layers. So perfectly matched layers are, uh, are a technique to handle unbounded domain problems. So when you have scattering w uh, waves that are scattered off of, of, a, of a bounded scatterer, the problem is usually posed in an unbounded domain, but we can't compute in an unbounded domain. So we put a perfectly matched layer that bounds the scatterer and truncate the perfectly matched layer after, after a little bit in order to make, in order to make the, the, the problem into, convert the problem into a, tr into a bounded domain problem. Okay, what happens inside a perfectly matched layer is, 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 is that the solution gets transformed by a, by a complex variable change which is what is implemented in NGSOL. And the complex variable change is such that the solution keeps its same structure inside the region of interest, but as soon as it goes inside the PML, it exponentially decays. So once it exponentially decays, you can put whatever boundary condition to truncate uh, the problem after, uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the PML. So here's an example of, uh, of a problem that, can, that benefits from, from PML. You have an unbounded domain problem outside uh, a dielectric or a scatterer. Um, together with the sum of all outgoing radiation condition at infinity. But we will not be, w w by, by putting the PML, we sidestep the problems in, uh, in particular problems uh, involving putting, the, uh, boundary, putting a boundary condition at, at infinity. So here is an example of uh, a little time harmonic pulse placed somewhere off center. Okay. You have uh, two circles here in this, in this geometry. One of the circles is the inner region where you want to see the solution. And the other region is a PML region where you've put this artificial perfectly matched layer. Uh, and this is perhaps clearer when you look at the geometry. There are, there are, this is the PML region and this is the inside region. Now, um, NGSOL makes it ridiculously easy for you to do PML. It's one line. You take the mesh and then set P call this function set PML. What it does, it, and, and you see that it's a method of the mesh class. So what it does is, is, is implement this complex coordinate transformation in the mesh. So the mesh coordinates have instead of being real coordinates, have now become complex coordinates, and they have become complex coordinates in exactly the way the PMO uh, complex variable change um, suggests that you should do. And in this variable change, there are some parameters. For example, the, PM, the radial PMO should know when to start the PMO. So it, it should know this radius. This is the outer radius. This outer radius must be specified. That's uh, uh, the, the, the outer radius or the starting radius of PML should be sp should be specified, and that's in this case it's one. The strength of the PML. This is the, a, a, a complex coordinate transformation where the imaginary part goes up like this, and, and and the way it goes up, the slope of how it goes up is determined by by this alpha. And since this is a radial PML, it needs to have an origin where. Uh, where it's, it starts to measure the radius f from which PML starts. And it also needs the PML, uh, the mesh needs to know where to set it, and the, so the mesh needs to know in which material or subdomain you should put the PML. So you have to in include the PML region as well. Okay, once this is done, the rest of the computations are very similar. You set a wave number, this is the Helmholtz operator, this is the radiation first order first order impedance boundary condition that that was in the previous section we we can put whatever boundary condition we like on the on the outside we may decide to put once the waves have has decayed out it doesn't really matter whether you put Dirichlet boundary conditions or or Robin boundary conditions in this example is Robin and then you do the inverse and there we are so we see a wave uh, that kind of decays in, into this into the subdomain, and, and there's no you, you don't see any waves getting reflected back from from the outside. And you can increase the strength of the PML if you like to to one, for, for example, recompute, and you see a sharper decay into the in, into the PML layer. 
Okay, and of course, uh, everything is better with animations, so you want to turn on periodic, uh, animate periodic to see how the waves start off from the pulse, go into the, P into the PML region, and never come back. <laughs> right. What is it, what is it, is it like Hotel California? <sighs> okay, so. Okay, in the remaining three, four minutes, let me show you a PML eigenvalue problem as well. These are sometimes called in the mathematical literature uh, as, uh, resonances. You're computing non-trivial modes, uh, or non-trivial use that satisfies this equation. So you can convert the, this into an eigenvalue problem by putting the omega squared on the right-hand side and calling the omega squared as an eigenvalue lambda. So omega is called the resonance, lambda is the, is the same old eigenvalue. Okay. okay, so this time we have a different geometry. We have a geometry that involves a cavity here. This is a, a metallic cavity, but the cavity is open. If you close the metallic cavity, then, then it has well-defined bounded uh, modes in a bounded domain. But uh, you open it up to air, then these modes leak out into air. So this is an example of a lossy or open cavity. Okay, uh, the red area here is the PML. Okay, so we want the waves to come out of this cavity, go up there, never come back, and we are neglecting the backward propagating waves and so forth. Okay. Okay, we set the PML like before, a radial PML. We make the bilinear form, and the, uh, the, both the left-hand side and the, and the right-hand side now are matrices. This is a generalized eigenvalue problem. You, you have the grad, grad matrix on one side and you have the mass matrix on the other side. So we make both of these, assemble them, and then we need an eigenvalue solver. This is a generalized eigenvalue problem. A x equals lam is, uh, lambda m x. You have, you have to send the A and the m to, to an eigenvalue solver. There is an eigenvalue solver lying around in ng-solve. It's called Arnoldi, Arnoldi solver. We can just go and call it now. There will be a more detailed discussion of eigenvalue solvers by uh, Joachim uh, later in the afternoon. So, okay, here, let's compute some resonances. Um, it chucks away, takes a while. Okay, now it's printed, uh, I'm sorry, it is drawn the modes and the corresponding lambdas are, are, the corresponding eigenvalues are printed here. If you look at the modes, um, I forgot to say one thing here, which is that this grid function is not a single grid function, but really 50 grid functions all packed into one. So we're computing 50 modes, okay? So how do you see all the 50 modes? Oh, you have to look at the visual menu, and then this box that we have not used so far, that's the one that you should use for looking at the modes. So let's look at these modes and this is another mode. Okay, now uh, it's interesting to look at the previous mode and then look at its corresponding eigenvalue. Here, here's the eigenvalue. The, the, this is the imaginary part of the eigenvalue. When you, when you, uh, you'll see modes which have, which have higher imaginary parts, and you'll see that you can, uh, they are, the, you can identify them as the modes that are less confined. So this mode is pretty much confined. It's got a nice uh, cavity region. This has has m more strength outside the cavity, and this one is is really uh, is really more confined. And you can see the imaginary part is is lower. This one has excellent confinement, and the imaginary part is just minus three, and so forth. And okay, so you can look look through the entire computer spectrum to your satisfaction. Um, all right, you could also pl plot plot this in the complex plane. You want to look at how the eigenvalues look like, and you see these, there are these branches of resonances that uh, that show up. And uh, for for those of you who have computed with com computer resonances, uh, would recognize these. I know there are some experts here, uh, so maybe I should not say much more than just. Uh, so I think that's.